Many millions of years ago, a race of hyper-intelligent, pan-dimensional beings got so fed up with the constant bickering about the meaning of life that they commissioned two of their brightest and best to design and build a stupendous supercomputer to calculate the answer to life, the universe, and everything. What's up, Artemis? I hope that you are well. We are going to be going over the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy's ultimate question today. And let's admit, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie series, radio series, full of philosophical things that we could go through and talk about. Ironically, what made me want to start this video was the whole idea of what is the meaning of life from the Red Dwarf series. <laughs> Listen, don't you ever stop and wonder, why are we here? What's the grand purpose? Why does it have to be such a big deal? There's a few quotes from Red Dwarf from my childhood that really shaped my entire philosophical self. And this, of course, would be mostly from Lister, but realistically, the entire show. Really, I'm gonna have two sons. Isn't it fantastic? But one of them dies. Yeah, well, everyone dies. You're born and you die. The bit in the middle is called life, and that's still to come. I haven't watched Red Dwarf in, like, a hundred years, and so when I heard one of the bad guys quote Schopenhauer, I was, I was tickled pink. I don't even know what to say. Schopenhauer was right, wouldn't you say? Life without pain has no meaning. Gentlemen, I wish to give your lives meaning. If Schopenhauer believes that life without pain has no meaning, this is a very interesting step that we can take for the meaning to life, so to speak. First of all, Schopenhauer is a known Buddhist, and so when we bring in Buddhism to this entire realm, we have to think that life is suffering. Pain, suffering, they're kind of interchangeable is what I'm uh, using today. But what is unfortunate is that suffering can be proved entirely meaningless if it has no good consequences. A lot of people say, whatever kills you makes you stronger. Ironically so, this is... What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Nietzsche, not Kelly Clarkson. But in either case, when there are no good consequences that come from suffering, like you win some, you lose some, and then you learn from your everything. Like, some people even say that if you suffer today, then you will get into heaven. We are not working with that frame of mind today, unfortunately. Additional. As the days go by, we face the increasing inevitability that we are alone in a godless, uninhabited, hostile, and meaningless universe. Still, you've got to laugh, haven't you? <laughs> but this is why people turn to what is called nihilism. When all of your suffering has no good in good consequences, then it has no meaning. And life without pain has no meaning. But life with pain that has no meaning. Life has no meaning. Life. Don't talk to me about life. Nihilism is generally just formed as life is meaningless, but to this Nietzsche definitely has his own whole scope and world to do with this. So I'm not sure if my idea of what nihilism is is influenced by that, but what I'm saying is that with suffering, there comes a whole world of why do we have to live with it? Why do you want to know the ultimate question? Oh, well, partly the curiosity, partly a sense of adventure, but uh, 
Mostly, I think it's for the fame and the money. <laughs> Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, from somewhere 1,500 years ago, says that life is suffering. Suffering comes from our desires. Desires can be got gotten rid of. They can be gotten rid of through the Eightfold Path. To this, Schopenhauer adds that our desires are also from FOMO, <laughs> the fear of missing out. What he says is that we get bored with what we have, and this boredom tends to lead us to desires for what we don't have. And this will just lead us in an endless loop of being unsatisfied with what we currently have. Incredible. It's even worse than I thought it would be. Largely external to us, from what it sounds like. To this, we could possibly think that our suffering being desires, maybe our desires are Nietzsche's will to power, which is to move and beyond yourself. And this wouldn't be desires as much so for yourself, but to move on into the world. Precisely. The criterion is not fame. It is simply to have lived a worthwhile life. Why did no one mention this before? <laughs> if I'd been told about this at the start, that the object was to lead a worthwhile life, I could have done something about it. So Nietzsche, what he says is, the meaning to life is ubermensch, over man, uh, Englishly translated to Superman. <laughs> That's fine. So Nietzsche says the meaning to life is Superman. The concept of the ubermensch is largely the cure to nihilism, but in nihilism, Everything is meaningless. The world is meaningless. Words are meaningless. The question, what is the ultimate question? What is the answer to the ultimate question? Life, universe, everything? Is that they're all words made by human man and that's it. The concept of what you're thinking in your brain to what it even could be, Nietzsche says that's completely up to you. That's what the Ubermensch is. It creates the meaning to everything. And so if everything is meaningless because it's created by man, then you create the meaning to it. Okay. Turn this into a woman. <laughs> I'm serious. So am I. Not necessarily when it comes to living in a society and following the laws and a red light can't mean go, can mean record. It's kind of like optimism. If it's super lame to do your taxes, just think about the part where you're making all the money back and you're getting it back. If you have to pay, I'm super sorry. If you have nothing to get back, doubly sorry. Just create a better meaning to what you're seeing. It's really that simple. To restate everything really quickly, when life equals suffering, and suffering either has or has no meaning, then everyone will eventually just lead to nihilism, which means life has no meaning. To this, the band-aid is Nietzsche's Ubermensch, which is you create the meaning. Hey, that's not bad. Life's what you make it. And whatever what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. It's a good answer. I feel like the other flip of the coin to what doesn't kill you makes you stronger is that there are generally optimistic 
refuse to take on things. I don't care. You're the one who's doing the dying, not me. Why should I let it spoil my evening? If there is no afterlife to believe in, even if there is, I don't know. We're not there to know. Um, then you can still learn from really terrible consequences and bad things happening to you. You can still learn and reflect and write a terrible book and be capitalistic on it. Like, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, honestly. And life's just what you freaking make it. So, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much for... Uh, wanting to know more about life, and the universe, and everything. Rubbish, we don't want to be happy, we want to be famous. Yeah! What is all this is she the one try? Take it, Bray! Hey guys, c'est moi. Uh, as you can see, I found a place to put a studio in my tiny little apartment. Welcome to where I do my work and spend 8 hours to 12 hours a day. And just needed to get a little extension cord and space things out and rearrange. So, I still need to rearrange my lights. They're currently mirrored to what they should be, but either way, I'm super duper excited. So yeah! Thank you for sticking here to the very, very end. You guys are the truest crew. Um, so yeah, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on the flip side. I love you. I didn't clean this new pot I got before the video. They're all dirty. So unbecoming.